Good evening. Good evening, everybody. This is Apostle Mark T. May, and welcome to the cave, the place where the prophets gather. Come on tonight, everybody. Come in, come in, like, share, turn on your notifications, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Look, we have an exciting broadcast tonight. Our special guest, uh, none other than an apostle, Joshua Giles. We're going to bring him on in just a minute. And I want to make a couple of announcements before I do that. Oh, come on in the room. Come on in with us. Let me give you a shout out. What's going on, Chris? Thank you for joining me. Apostle Gaskin, thank you for being on. Apostle Sonia, what's up? Thank you for being in. Listen, let me make these quick announcements. I'm going to bring the man of God on uh, in just a minute. But ATL, I'm coming down your way. Let me throw this up on the uh Throw this up in the screen. I'll be in Atlanta, actually, um, tomorrow. I'll be arriving in Atlanta tomorrow. I'll be there with Apostles Lewis and Kimberly Jones. I'll be there for the prayer gathering, Revi Revived by Fire, also with Dr. Yvonne Capehart and Apostle Pam Vanette. And so I'm so excited about getting down there into the Atlanta area. Listen, I'm going to forego all the other announcements. I'm going to get right into it and bring the man of God right on in. All right, everybody. I want to introduce my guest tonight, uh, Apostle Joshua Giles. And we'll get into... Uh, we've been knowing each other for a long time, so we'll get into all of that once I bring him on in the introduction. Apostle Joshua Giles, who is the Apostle of Kingdom Embassy Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, the Manto Network, and everybody, I'm sure you know, Monday Live, all right, the prophetic forecast. All right, without further ado, I'm bringing in the man of God. What's up, Apostle? What's up? What's up? What's up? How you doing, Apostle Mark? It's good to be on here with you. Excited about uh, what you're doing. I've heard about the cave and just the different voices you've had on. So I'm excited to be on here with you. Great. Well, it's good to have you with us. Uh, so I want to get right into it. Well, let me see. Well, maybe there's something. Is there anything that maybe you would want? Um, I didn't mention. I talked about uh, Kingdom Embassy, uh, the Manto Network. What else are you uh, currently doing? Something maybe that you would want the public to know that maybe uh, you haven't really talked that much about? Oh, that's a good question there. Um, I'm actually doing quite a few things <laughs> behind the scenes right now. Um, I'm actually in a five week mentorship program. Uh, so we've got uh, so many people from around the world and around the country that are on. And it's pretty much just training. And I'm taking people with me. Um, on my journey of consecration, fasting, prayer, as we prepare for 2023. Um, and then we're gearing up for another uh, mantle conference uh, that's going to be in April of uh, 2023. And the one this year was just, I mean, it, God just blew our minds with what happened. And so I'm excited to be doing that again. So it's quite a few things, but um, that's uh, that's just a couple of them that's going on right now. Well, that's good. Well, listen, I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, I'm glad that I have you on. I had people send me messages like, you know, it's eight o'clock. Hey, I was a little bit late tonight. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I was a little bit late. But let I, this is one of the things I wanted to ask you uh, about. And that's with the prophetic, because this is a we have a lot of conversation about the prophetic, about prophets, um, different prophetic flows and styles. And so one of the things I wanted to ask you, you're known now for your Monday live, the prophetic forecast. And I wanted to ask you this question, you know, not so much about what God is showing you right now, but, you know, the, the in-depth of the prophetic, uh, I've heard you talk about personal prophecy in comparison to uh, got speaking to us about the future. So let's let's talk about that a little bit, the kind of the difference between the word of knowledge and when God is speaking prophetically about the future. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? 
Yeah, this this is a great subject. It's, it's one that me and you, we've talked about, and then uh, so many others of us that are in just the prophetic, uh, we, we deal with this subject because what, a few years ago or in the past decade, we saw such confusion come in uh, to the body of Christ without going into detail of all of that. But there was a lot of confusion over what is the voice of God, what's not the voice of God. And so when we deal with personal prophecy, those are our words specific to one individual. And so that's when the Lord gives a prophetic word for that person, for their future, their assignment, their destiny. And then, of course, it, it often comes with words of knowledge. And so most people today confuse prophecy with a word of knowledge. And so a word of knowledge, according to Corinthians, uh, the Apostle Paul broke down those nine gifts. Uh, it's when you're given information or knowledge that is known to that individual but you do not know it by any natural means. It's only revealed by the Holy Spirit. And so it could be information about the past uh, of that individual or it could be information about the present. And so if I'm sharing with someone, which apostle you know, because I've had the um, pleasure of uh, being a part of a school that you did um, so many years ago, I was probably 14 or so, and I had been around so many different um, prophets and leaders, my pastors uh, were my parents and they were uh, moving heavily in the prophetic still, they still do, but I was around that. And so of course that was pumped into me at a very early age. Uh, but there are times where you're giving an individual a word and it's about something that they are currently dealing with, where the Lord is showing you that person is having a financial hardship and uh, they're dealing with money troubles or whatever. That's a word of knowledge where prophecy comes in for that individual is when you're telling them, but this is what the Lord says will happen in the future. It is not currently taking place, but it's going to happen. And then there are varying degrees of prophecy. So you have the personal prophecy, but then uh, there may be corporate prophecy for a local church or group of people. And then there's prophecy that may be given to uh, a nation, a city, a country, uh, or even uh, nations, plural. And so what you mentioned about uh, the prophetic forecast, um, I've been doing this for years since I was a kid uh, till now. And a lot of people over the past few years found out about the ministry. But what I watched the Lord do was transition me some years ago from just dealing with personal prophecy to moving to governmental uh, prophecy, which was dealing with nations. And during that time, Apostle, what happened for me is I was traveling around the country, preaching from place to place. And the Lord said to me, this had to be like, probably like 10 years ago, the Lord said to me, you will not uh, do any personal prophecy in this service. And I said, but God, this is why they brought me here. If I don't do, if I don't flow in personal prophecy, the, the leaders are going to be upset. The host is going to be upset. And the Lord began to challenge me. Are you yeah. my prophet or are you the people's prophet? And so for Ooh. the space of about 12 months, everywhere that I preached, uh, he told me, do not do personal prophecy. And I didn't understand it, but he was shifting me out of that system, out of that realm and bringing me into other forms of prophetic flow. So I'll stop right there, Apostle, and just let you know. <laughs> well, well, that's good. Now, you know, there's something, you know, because we have, like you said, we have these conversations where we get a chance to talk. We have these conversations that, you know, and I remember years ago with myself, I would be in services and I would start prophesying about, you know, Japan or something like that. And I mean, I'm in the service, you know, when I think about it now, I'm doing something. And the people had no idea really what, <laughs> what right, was going right. on, you know, because all they wanted was the was the personal, the personal prophecy. And, you know, that but there's so much more. You know, let me say this. This is another thing that I've that I've been telling people lately. Um that prophecy, because I've had a few people, you know, uh, I was ministering somewhere and somebody just said, well, you know, I, that's right. That's right. That's right. And um, and that just kind of kind of irritated me a little bit. And I'm going to tell you why, because it's more than like you said, word of knowledge, as you said, just, you know, it tells you about, you know, all the things that you just talked about, but when the true prophetic kind of, you know, comes in, even if it's on a personal level, it really kind of disrupts your life. This is one of the things the Lord has been dealing with me. You know, it happened to Saul, you know, his life was, was disrupted 
uh, Saul, we're talking about King Saul. Before he was king, his life was disrupted when he came into contact with uh, with Samuel. And all throughout Scripture, Jonah, you know, we can go on all up into, into the New Testament. Elizabeth, Mary, their lives were disrupted when, when the prophetic came in, into their lives. So, you know, it's more than somebody confirming. I guess that's the point that I was <laughs> that I was trying to make. But uh, Apostle, so Giles, listen, so so you said the Lord told you, you know, not to give any personal prophecies for a year. So, so what advice would you give to not just young prophets, but people maybe that may be older that are in the prophetic? Um, what type of advice do you have for those who are trying to or learning or developing their uh, prophetic gift? Yeah, I would say don't uh, limit uh, your the way that God wants to use you. Don't limit the prophetic flow uh, because, you know, we were often trained that, um, well, the Lord may only speak to you through hearing or the Lord may only speak to you through visions uh, or this way or that way. And so we develop a way that's familiar to us. But what some uh, within the church has actually taught us to do is to shut God out in other ways. And so I remember I was getting ready to preach uh, in a service. I was in my hotel room preparing and I heard the Holy Spirit say to me that you have limited the way I can use you. And this was out of the blue to me. This was not something that he had been speaking to me. And I was kind of shocked. I was saying, Lord, what do you mean? Like, how, how have I limited? And he began to walk me through this. He said, because you tell people I'm this kind of prophet. I flow this way. This is the way that I hear. or This is the way that I see. And so he said to me, if I want to speak to you in a different way, your spirit is closed to it. And so right there in my hotel room, I began to repent. And I asked the Lord to forgive me for limiting him and for blocking him out. And I told him in that in that one moment, Lord, whatever way you want to speak through me, however you want to show me something, I'm not just a hearing prophet. I'm not just a seeing prophet. I'm not whatever way you want to flow through me. I open up to allow you. And from that moment forward, um, my my personal ministry went through um, a period where it was revolutionized. I saw that change occur. So I would encourage those of you watching Take the limits of how God wants to use you. Um, don't lock him into a certain way. And then some uh, preachers that are watching, we get locked into preaching circuits and, you know, it can uh -oh. actually limit your assignment. I know we're about to kind of go somewhere in this. It can limit your assignment. And that's what happened to me. Apostle, to be honest, uh, not only did the Lord take me through that period where he said, don't do personal ministry for this period of time. But then shortly after that, I remember God saying to me, do not. I don't want you preaching uh, in the places that you typically were preaching. And so he literally shut my ministry down in the States. And so during that time, I remember just being baffled, like, Lord, what are you doing? That's my livelihood right now. That's the way that I, you know, make a living and uh, ask the Lord, how am I going to make a living now? And he didn't respond to me. So apparently he knew what, what was going to happen. But for <laughs> me, he said, I'm breaking you out of the slavery system that you have called the church. And so he said, I'm going to bring you out of that. And during that period, it was a year and a half. Uh, that he shut my ministry down from the States, the Lord began to open doors in other countries. And again, that's when he acclimated me with more uh, being called to the nations and also with prophecy that was was to a country or to one person in uh, the government in that nation. And I fell in love with that kind of ministry. And it did something to me because you know this apostle, you traveled the nations. When you go to the nations, you, you can't go back to being the same a, as you were. It changes something in you. Yes. So just encouraging everybody watching, take the limits off. Don't box God in. And for some of you, the Lord's going to break you out of whatever slavery system you've been in. That's, that's really been a religious box for you. Wow. I mean, that, that's a lot. And, you know, you have to take the lim taking the limits off. That, that's important. I remember when I was being, I was an associate pastor in a church. And I was feeling that role, that capacity. And one day I was, you know, I was teaching a Bible study, I think on Wednesdays or something that I was doing in that church. And as I was preparing, the Lord said to me, you're becoming something that you are not. And I was like, what? Because I was starting to become that pastor and I, I kind of neglected the prophetic aspect of it. I was still prophesying. 
but it was just something was different about it. And when he said that to me, I went in that night and I acted like a madman. And, uh, you know, that assignment didn't last very long after, <laughs> after that. Well, listen, I want to say this. Um, now, you know, we see you on the prophetic uh, forecast on Mondays. And I, I want to share this because you were reluctant anyway. You did not want to do Facebook Live. <laughs> I remember when all the live streaming came on. That, that is something that you did not want to do. And so I think that, that that's what's amazing about this, that you waited for God's time. Yeah. I, you know, I actually, not only did I wait for the Lord's timing, I was a little bit rebellious during that, that, that brief period because, you know, the Lord kept speaking to me in uh, 2018, he started preparing me. And then in 2019, uh, I felt this urgency from the Lord. And he said to me, you need to go on, on live. And so I went and bought all this TV equipment with the lights and stuff that I use now. I bought it in 2019 and I got it all and just stuffed it in a closet that was there. And I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't take it out. I didn't want to use it. And I remember uh, several people saying to me, why aren't you going on live stream? Like you need to be sharing this stuff. And of course I was ministering in my church that I pastor and in yeah. other ministries, but I just didn't see the appeal. It wasn't something I liked. I, I didn't prefer to be in front of a camera. Um, that's just not something that I cared for. Uh, and I would even come on uh, maybe here or there for uh, one or two leaders, maybe as as their guests for them to interview me. Uh, but it got to the point when we came into 2020, I actually met with my team in January of that year. And I told them, the Lord said to me, I have to go on live and start doing live streams. I said, I really don't want to do this. But since the Lord is making me, um, let's just put it on the schedule. And so that's really how uh, it started for me so that when the pandemic hit uh, in 2020, uh, you know, we had everything already ready. The Lord had already been telling me to go on. And I started out uh, sharing that prophetic word that he had given me a couple years before on a global reset. Um, so you you may know, and some of you watching, it was probably 2015 that the Lord gave me that prophecy in my church about a rare virus that was going to come into um, the world. Doctors wouldn't know what it was. Um, it was going to baffle scientists. But the Lord said to me back then that we would know that it had come out of a lab. And uh, he gave me details of how it was going to disrupt the world. And we started covering and praying then. But it would be yeah. five years before we saw that occur. And so many people in my ministry came back to me and just said, we apologize. We thought you watched too many sci-fi movies. We didn't know what. <laughs> you know, We just didn't. But because it was so far-fetched. And that's something that you're hitting on, Apostle. The real prophetic is going to carry you into a future that people are not comfortable with and that people are not aware of because they've never been there. And that's why I believe the enemy's assignment has been to keep prophets trapped in low level prophecy, yes. only in low level forms of words of knowledge. Because even the way we do word of knowledge now, you know, by telling somebody you've been in this situation and this is going on and people get all excited or calling out someone's name. As, as accurate as that could be, is still low level. Uh, the Lord wants to bring us so far into the future so that we can prepare. And when we're shot forth into that eternal place, there will be no confusion between psychics and prophets or whether this person is operating in a familiar spirit or whether it's God or not, because familiar spirits, they love that familiarity. They love that familiar realm yes. because they don't know the future. They don't know the future. Only the Holy Spirit, the Ancient of Days, has understanding of his timetable in the future. And so when we're carried there, familiar spirits can't go into that realm with us. They only know because they've studied your family, your patterns, what you do. They know information about your yeah. now but they do not have information about your next. And that's where we baffle uh, and disrupt the psychics and the witches and the warlocks when we carry the future and when we release that into the now. Wow. Carrying the future. I hope y'all got that. When we carry the future, it baffles the psychics, the witches. And we carry, you know, there's something you quote the scripture in, um, in Ezekiel. You said, wherever the spirit is to go. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. I've, I've heard you say that many, many, many times. And that's where we should be with the prophetic. Where where's the spirit going? You know, we yeah. should be able to tap into 
the future. You know, the low level prophecy. Uh, one one of my guests said, you know, that's um, that's preschool. You know, personal prophecy yeah. is, is preschool <laughs> level. But we have not had many opportunities to see the prophetic beyond that level because so many people have got stuck there. Something I was thinking about today because there was a, a book written some time ago that said that probably around 20, like the, the early 2000s that we would see this movement of believers. And, but now I think where we are is that there is a movement where God is really raising up true, authentic, prophetic voices, you know, uh, and they are young. Okay. They are, they are, they are sold out. They have the character to match. Let me say that for a minute. They have the character to match along with the gifting, you know? So I think that we need to take heed to a lot of things that you've already said, take the limits off. You know, don't put any limitation on what it is that how God will speak to you, the way that God will speak to you. You know, we need to be open to all that. So let's talk about the, the future for a minute. Uh, I know God is already dealing with you, showing you some things about even into the uh, next year, even into the, the, the decade. You know, I've seen some of the posts. Uh, and then again, we've had conversations about a lot of this stuff. So what is God showing you about maybe going into... Um, this next uh, new quarter of the year or 2023 or whatever uh, you want to share? Yeah, 2023 is, and, and the question you're asking again is really a loaded question. You know, I believe that um, this, this year is going to represent uh, what the Hebrew uh, term for this that we're going into, it's called pay gamel um, in Hebrew. And uh, every time we go into a new year, there is a Hebrew meaning behind that year that prophesies to us. Not only that, every single month is loaded with prophetic insight, prophetic instructions, because that's the way God set up his calendar. Now, the calendar that we're on, the regular calendar that we use today, it's very different from God's calendar, his timetable. But this year, Pei Gamel, it's the picture of a, when you look this up in Hebrew, it's the picture of a rich man running after a poor man to transfer something to him. And mm. so what I heard the Lord say to me, he said, this new year, you're going to see rapid transfers. There's going to be transfers of anointing. There's going to be transfers of influence, where the Lord's going to take influence off of one and put it onto someone else who is ready for it, who's been preparing, who he has called for that. You're also going to see, continue to see a transference of mantles, where we're seeing the passing of batons in different uh, spheres and different organizations and industries. Uh, but then we're also going to see that wealth transfer that's happening. And I've been sharing this for the last couple of years because the Lord said this to me in such a strong way. And I begin to experience this in my own personal life. And I believe that many of you on here, you're getting ready to have these kinds of experiences where there's about to be a wealth transfer that's going to happen. And God's not doing it just so that we can say we have money or we have substance. He will only transfer into the lives of those that have been called and that he's ordained to advance yes. the kingdom. So it's not about getting something to us. It's really about getting something through us into other people. So get ready to see um, the the economy crash even more. Now, I know that that seems like it's an oxymoron to some people, but it's really not. The Lord would allow the economy to crash and we're not just headed into a recession. I heard the Lord say to me, it will be another, uh, it will be a modern day depression that, that the economy goes into. And you'll have, for those of you that don't know about the economy, just look it up and you'll see what that means. But it's worse than a recession. And God said to mm -hmm. me, when we see this recession get worse, you're going to know that it signifies money changing hands. It is a sign of a transfer. And there are many people that are carrying great vision in them, but you said, God, I don't have the backing. I don't have the funding. I don't have people that are going to underwrite this. And the Lord says, all of that is about to change. But what you're going to notice is that uh, a big, the, the new big is really small in, in this new year that we're coming yeah. into. 
a lot of what we're going to be seeing is the Lord touching small ministries that are about to reach the world. God's about to go into storefront churches, into caves and dens, areas, places like that. And uh, that's been my testimony. I started from a small, if, if, if people really knew where I started from, that really touched around the nations and around the world, it didn't even make natural sense. And yeah. that's kind of ridiculous favor and blessing that's about to come on many where the Lord is saying you're going to see that small is really the new big it's from your small church unit under 100 people that's about to shift your region yeah. it's from your small business small businesses are about to be empowered Christian owned small businesses you're going to see the Lord use them in this uh, the latter part of this decade you're getting ready to see a change come with that and then again it's going to be on small family units where the Lord is going to anoint the small to do what the big would typically do. And I'm, I'm not against mega churches. I love them. But just those of you that are listening, understand that small is the new big. God's moving in the small things. And we're going to continue to see a transference happen. My God. I tell you that 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 that's that's so good, Apostle. You know, because I remember years ago, even in, in your church here in um when you were in Raleigh that we had prophecies that, you know, God was turning things upside down. You know, we were talking about things flipping. We were prophesying, you know, those years when you were still in Raleigh. And even I remember a word that the Lord gave me one time that didn't make any sense, but it makes perfect sense now, even to what you're saying. Uh, the Lord said that the, that the, that the greater would come out of the lesser. Yeah. And it didn't make sense then, you know, and things flipping and turning. But now, you know, we prophesy you know, you said sometimes so far ahead of, of in the future, we don't fully understand what it is that we're saying. We just know we're just sometimes crazy enough to say this is what God is saying. Right now, let, let me ask you something, because you said something and in, in, even in your book, those of you that don't have it, I got it right here. The prophetic <laughs> forecast, if you can find it somewhere because it's selling out everywhere. You talked about new technology. You talked about the new technology um, that that that's coming. That's one of the things that you've said. God showed me some things that I've shared with people that what we've only seen in science fiction would start becoming a reality. And so, what what is God showing you about the new technology? Yeah, the the Lord spoke to me about that um, a few years ago as well, and I, I wrote it in that book. Uh, prophetic forecast for those of you that have it or those of you that don't. I'm sure you can order it and, and find it even in your local stores. Uh, but the Lord spoke to me that after, when he gave me that word about the virus in 2015, he said after that period, we were going to see a technological boom that would happen that was going to shoot us uh, so many years into the future. It was going to look like, this is what he said to me, he said, the movies that you see is going to look like you're living in those movies. And uh, the Lord began to speak to me about artificial intelligence uh, and the rapid advancements that were going to come uh, concerning that. And some of that is in that book as well. But he said to me, the church is going to have to familiarize itself with these new technologies. There are some that are going to be able to be placed on the ground floor of them. Of course, there are demonic agendas uh, surrounding some of these things, but we don't want to miss a vehicle and an opportunity to advance the kingdom in those areas. So I saw uh, Apostle uh, Prophets aligning with scientists. Wow. I saw the Lord putting together uh, prophets with inventors and even some uh, prophetic people would become inventors. But I saw this merging in the spirit where uh, by the time the next major uh, plague or virus hits, the Lord will begin to speak to different prophetic individuals and show them what to do, how we can uh, cover ourselves and how we can make sure that we're protected, even when some of these things are coming, because there are more plagues that are going to come on the earth. And people have no yeah. idea, you know, COVID-19 and some of these variants that we've seen is not it. Uh, you can begin to look at this as almost a trial run for some of what is coming. And I also wrote about that prophetically. The Lord said to me, what's coming, uh, there are some things coming that are going to be far worse than what we have already seen. And I'm not trying to release doom or gloom because we don't have to panic, but uh, this is for us to intercede, to be prepared, and to also yeah. know how to plan concerning what's coming. But I saw artificial intelligence advance to the point
point where many people, when they hear artificial intelligence, they think of, you know, robots and metal. But I saw it advance to the point where uh, it was actually uh, uh, living organisms. And these organis organisms were crafted through artificial intelligence. And that's actually what they were. Uh, but it, they didn't look like artificial intelligence. It's very yes. different. Uh, and I saw the government beginning to use these things. And because of this platform, I won't go into uh, uh, those details. But uh, much of the technology that we have seen that looks futuristic is going to become so easily a part of what we wear. I saw it as things that we wear is going to uh, the, the phones that we're using now will even be very bulky. Look, Apostle, why do you have me going into this direction of, <laughs> of, of technology? Some of these people can't take that. And but uh, well, some of you, you know, know it's, it, it, I'm sorry, but you know, look, I understand what you're saying because I had given this word, and what the Lord showed me was uh, um, I saw a, a man who had his limbs were more AI, he had more AI, like you like, like his legs, his arm, and he only had like one natural arm. The man was more artificial intelligence in his body than his, 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 what was left of his real body. And what the Lord told me, and I know you can attest this. He said, the first thing is the church was going to say it was demonic. They were going to, you know, they were not going to believe and accept that this could, you know, could be something that would be beneficial. The first thing that they were going to say, they were going to not agree with it in the beginning. So, you know, I understand, but we need people, we need to, people need to know this stuff. They don't need to know their phone number. They know that they don't need to know their social security number. They already know that. So if you want to continue down that way, listen, I'm, I'm sure the audience wants to hear more about the technology. <laughs> well, I, I wrote about uh, more of this in, uh, in, prof in prophetic forecast, um, not just in that chapter on technology, but there's a chapter uh, called a new kind of war, a different kind of war. And uh, the Lord spoke to me about a years long war. He said, these are uh, times where we're going to come into uh, uh, war in the nations, that there will be conflicts among the nations. And I begin to prophesy this right before uh, the war came up with Russia and Ukraine. And when I released those words, I actually had uh, certain outlets, media outlets and news outlets contact me. And they said, look, we heard what you prophesied and it's happening happening right now behind the scenes. And so the Lord will give us those things in advance. But I'm sharing this because the Lord has shown me on several occasion, uh, occasions, I've seen visions of it. I've had details of this where I saw a years long war and conflict that involved uh, many of wow. the major countries and nations. But he said to me that it was going to be uh, fought with artificial intelligence and certain kinds of weaponry that we were not used to. And I saw uh, at a period where America would be targeted. And so, uh, again, I only share this for intercessors to begin to pray and just cover these areas. Uh, but it was with technology and with things, with even certain chemicals that we we had never seen before, we were not prepared for. Uh, and I knew that the Lord was showing it to me as a warning and as a sign. And so again, uh, these are things that I believe are being planned behind the scene that the enemy is desiring to do. And of course, some things we cannot stop, but with our prayers, we can we can either lessen them uh, or we can cause where there would have been loss of life. Uh, intercession is so powerful that it can sustain life even when those times arise. So 2023, and onward, uh, definitely for the next five to seven years, uh, we need to be paying attention. We need to be praying and covering because I saw war break out, not even just in the way that we have been seeing it right now, but I've seen this occur and unfold very rapidly. And I saw it include the United States. Wow. Well, listen, I know you, you know, God shows you things of that nature. We release words like that. But there's also, like you said, not a gloom and doom. But it's going to be still one of the greatest times for the kingdom of God. And that's what people need to remember, even though God has given us, showing us these things so that we can intercede, pray, stand in the gap. But yet it's still going to be one of the greatest times for those of us that are part of the kingdom. Absolutely. Man. You know Absolutely. what? Let me say something. Possible. You mentioned something about the cha changing of the guard. And I know that's not just a spiritual Thing. And we've been seeing it happen. We saw in the UK that they had what, like three prime ministers within the matter of months. 
you know, so there is a there's a natural changing of the guard and there's also a spiritual changing of the guard. Uh, is there anything else about the changing of the guard that you could share with us? Yeah, that's uh, again, a loaded subject. I, I actually was sent there uh, to the UK uh, with a small team uh, during that time. And I was in London and then I had gone to uh, some other European countries around that. And while I was there meeting with a group of um, prophets, I was in Switzerland as well, meeting with a, a group of some of the major prophets from all over that country. And uh, the Lord spoke to me in detail concerning London. And he said to me to tell the people that a switch is about to happen. He said, you're going to see power change hands and it's going to be the changing of the guard that's coming. And so uh, literally when the prime minister resigned, I was over there in London, had just given that prophetic word. And then we saw it happen wow. within 24 hours uh, of that. And so, of course, uh, people that were around that were there were blown away because they just heard the Lord speak it. And then out of the blue, it came. But I told them what the Lord said to me is that this would be a sign. What we see happening in uh, the UK is a sign of the direction that the West is going and that the world is going into. And it's a spiritual sign of uh, power shifting hands, seats that are changing. And this isn't just between the old and the young, because there's some people that are older and they feel like, well, maybe my time is up in this. And that's not what that, that means. When the Lord shifts power, seats of power, he looks at the heart of an individual. He looks at the assignment and the purpose of that person. And sometimes yeah. it is just because of his will that he's saying, I'm going to bring one down and I'm going to put another in place. So again, over the next several years, we're going to continue to see that happening more and more. And, and biblically, the picture of it is the house of Saul uh, that, that's becoming weaker and the house of David that's yeah. getting stronger. So that's the kind of power shifts that we're we're going to see even in the pulpits in America and around the nations. Uh, what we see them as today over the next several years, the pulpits are going to look very different. Some of your leading voices will not be there anymore. Uh, some of them will be shifting to the background as the Lord sends new voices, voices that others people have not heard before, have not received from. You're going to see a complete change in the dynamics of ministry and how things operate within the world. Wow. Now that's, you know, that is amazing that these things are going to be happening and we're privy. Listen, the prophetic lets you see what's going on. I used to always say it's like reading uh, tomorrow's newspaper today that God is bringing us and sharing so much information uh, about what's coming. You know, one of the things that um the Lord was showing me that was 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 happening, and I'm, let me ask you about this. That I begin, I started seeing leaders in developing nations that were young leaders that were that were coming up. I mean, like 30s, early 30s leaders that were coming up, and I started seeing how that those nations, which were known as developing countries, how their uh, not only the, the political shift, the change of the guard, but then the economies of developing nations began to shift. Now, has God showed you anything like that? Absolutely. And I wrote about some of that in detail in that book as well, writing down the, the different nations that I saw. They're called the BRICS uh, nations. And those are the emerging uh, nations and economies that are really rising right now, but we're going to see them continue to rise. Uh, there, there are several countries uh, on the continent of Africa that we're going to see a shift in the economy. We're literally going to see a rising of certain African nations. But the Lord spoke to me concerning Africa and even South America. I saw yes. several uh, of those nations in South America, Brazil, some of those areas. The Lord says we're going to see uh, a contending. So there's going to be major warfare and battles over those nations. It's already going on right now where really it's principalities clashing. It's principalities at war. But at the end of that, you're going to see those nations begin to rise up in power. I saw uh, new structures coming. Uh, you're going to see in some of those developing nations where 
Uh, they're going to be industrialized. This means that you're going to see systems come. And some of them are actually going to outpace uh, America and other first world nations. They're going to outpace us in their growth. Uh, there, Some of them, uh, you're going to see them in terms of education begin to rise and emerge. But not only will we see it in the economy, but we're also going to see yeah. a move of God hit those areas. It's already been there, but you're going to see it begin to pick up uh, where in, in Brazil and in South America and some of those areas in Africa, you're going to yeah. see major moves of God where it's going to be nothing for the dead to be raised in those areas. You're going to start oh. hearing reports of it on the news. You're going to hear people talking about it, that Jesus raised this person up from the dead. And uh, it's, I believe it's going to be the hand of the Lord moving on those nations because there are many believers Hear this for those of you that are watching. There are many believers that have been crying out, that have been under oppression. Uh, they have been under abuse. Uh, they have been uh, under such economic strain. And I can hear it even now in the spirit where their cries have gone up before the father. And he's raising up modern day deliverers. They're not yeah. going to look the way people think. Some of them are going to be industry leaders, but they are going to be carrying a, a mantle of like a, a Moses to transition a people out of Egypt. Uh, some of them are going to be carrying a mantle of like a Daniel uh, that has the wisdom beyond his age. And so these may be industry leaders and they may also be spiritual leaders, but they're anointed to help bring those people yes. out of the oppression and the bondage that they've been in. I can even hear the Lord saying now their cries have come up before me and the Lord says, I'm going to I'm going to deliver. I'm going to bring breakthroughs. Medical breakthroughs are going to come. Some of the greatest discoveries are going to come out of those developing nations. And so uh, we could just get ready for it. I'm excited. I know, Apostle, you travel to, to many of those nations nations. I've been going there as well. And so when you meet the people, the believers in these countries, yes. you can't help but fall in love with them and just see their passion and hunger for God. Yes, you're right. You know, there's, there's so much, you know, when it starts talking about the nations and what God's doing in the future, what you just talked about you know, we talked about the leadership. We talked about some of the technology and things that is going to come out, you know, and I believe that it is a there's the there's an economical shift that's going to happen, you know, in so many of these nations that have been been overlooked and uh, that their economies are going to become very, um, very strong. I mean, I believe that's part of the things of what it is that God has shown. Listen, we, I don't know how long do I, I don't know how long I have you for. So I don't want to, uh, we're usually on, a, well, we're supposed to be on an hour, but most of my guests get on here and start prophesying and we end up being over here on here longer, <laughs> longer than that. But uh, I want to backtrack on one thing that you said, and maybe you could elaborate on that a little bit, because you talked about the, the transference of, um, of wealth. You know, a couple of years ago, I started teaching about the great wealth transfer. I read an article that said there was $68 trillion that would be transferred from baby boomers uh, to their heirs or to the generations that are coming behind. And so the Lord had been showing me that for those who were not part of that $68 trillion to pass on, that he was getting ready to open up some doors of, of opportunities to get wealth. And one of the things that he was saying to me, um, where it talks about, the scripture talks about that the wealth is laid up. And the word there laid up means hidden away. And the way the Lord showed it to me was he said, you know, uh, it was hid away in a secret place. And yeah. so what he said to me, he connected with Amos 3 and 7, where he said, you know, that surely he would do nothing except he reveal his what secrets to his servants, the prophets. So I believe that the prophetic is connected. The prophets are connected to this transference of, of wealth. Uh, is there anything else you could add to that that God has showed you? Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's important to be connected to pure prophets, especially uh, companies of prophets is what the Lord is really uh, moving in now. It's not uh, just the Lone Ranger individual, but it's companies of prophets that I believe the Lord is putting his hand on because you're going to find uh, that uh, significance is going to come and direction is going to come out of the cluster. 
Uh, that that's where the information is. That's where the insight is. Uh, yes. But the Bible says that believe in the Lord, your God, and so shall you be established. Believe his prophets and so shall you prosper. That word prosper is a loaded word. It doesn't just deal with increase. It doesn't just mm-hmm. deal with expanding. It literally means in Hebrew to move forward, believe right. his prophets and so shall you advance. So shall you move mm-hmm. forward. And so the way we're going to get that advancement, that hidden secret knowledge, it's going to be through prophetic individuals. Now, all of them may not be well-known prophets. All of them may not be on television. And so we have to take off some of those stereotypes that we or those things that we put in place, should I say, uh, for uh, prophets that we want to gravitate to. Well, you know, well, this is my favorite one. This is my pick over here. Come on, and really, man. the Lord can use whoever he wants to use. Uh, he can use somebody that you don't even like. And we better have discernment enough to hear God through an individual uh, as long as they're pure and, and their fruit uh, is manifesting the character of Christ, uh, then we should be able to glean from them. But yes, uh, it's going to be direction that will come concerning the markets, direction that's going to come concerning the economy, uh, concerning the way that jobs are transitioning. I remember uh, it was probably 12 years ago, the Lord gave me a prophetic word and he said, tell this word everywhere you go. And so everywhere I went to preach, he said, there's going to be a great migration uh, in the kingdom that's going to happen. And he said, tell the people uh, that some of you are going to be moved from the areas that you are in. He said, some of you are on the East Coast. You're going to be picked up and moved to the West Coast. Some of Come you are you're going to move to the Midwest. Some of you in different areas. And I remember prophesying this, not knowing that I was speaking to myself as well. And so I, I, I had no idea that I was going to move from the South and move to the Midwest, but I was sharing this everywhere. And I believe that we're in that as well. And, and where you are geographically and where you are mm-hmm. spiritually matters, because it wasn't until I plugged into that God spot, which came through prophetic direction and instruction, that the Lord began to increase and expand things within my life. And so, yes, please listen to the prophetic voices uh, that are pure. Uh, Not the ones that are trying to charge you by the minute for whatever it is that uh, they're trying to tell you. Those that are pure prophetic voices. I know I'm in trouble, so let me stop, Apostle. (laughs) Well, look, we just have to tell it like it is. You know, you have to hear the pure prophetic voice uh, and not just be caught up in a person's gift or their their charisma. But we have to look at the character, look at the look at the lifestyle. But something you said, which is which is very important, which I've always liked about what you've been saying prophetically, that there are people or prophets that we don't know about. They don't have a platform. They, they, they're maybe in a storefront somewhere, uh, but they carry the word of the Lord. Yeah. They yeah. carry the word of the Lord. And I think that's, I think that's very encouraging to a lot of people to, to understand that, you know, like you said, there's a switch, you know, God is taking, he's switching things. He's taking people that were on the backside and he's turning them and bringing them around to the front, you know? So I want people to be encouraged tonight by all of what they're, what they're hearing is that you may not have a, a, a large platform, but that doesn't mean that you're not um, valuable to the kingdom of God or the word that you're carrying. Come on. It still has weight. Yes. Yes. And, and you know what, Apostle, many times I've seen where the no name people are actually the ones uh, who are carrying significant anointing on them uh, to bring deliverance to people, to uh, minister to them. I've seen it where it's almost like hidden gems and the Lord will have people hidden. Uh, sometimes uh, the most valuable possessions are hidden. They're placed in in uh, in in certain uh, areas where everybody can't access them, and the Lord had to teach me that because you know you look at some of the greatest gifts and you wonder why isn't this gift on that platform? Why isn't this gift in that area? And it's the same with a diamond. If you had a super valuable diamond or uh, or, or piece of jewelry, you wouldn't just put it anywhere. You wouldn't just give anybody access to it. Uh, the rare jewels are are kept 
in uh, for protection. And so for some of you that are watching that are leaders, you wondered why God didn't you put me in that area? Why didn't you put me, you know, I watched other people go there. Why didn't you send me there? And sometimes he was trying to protect your oil. He didn't want you to become contaminated uh, by the surrounding environment that you would have gotten yourself in because yeah. your clean name is going to be valuable and important at some point and sometime someone's going to look at you and say, thank God you weren't associated with this or you weren't associated with that. Now we can pull on you. So I do believe that the switch is here. We're seeing the Lord begin to move people in different areas and the size of the crowd does not matter. It's not about the crowd. It's about following the cloud. And so you're going to find that the masses are going to be searching out those no-name leaders. And it's already happening. The masses are going to be coming because they can't get it uh, from some of the people that are popular. They're going to have to come to people that are powerful. And I would choose to be powerful over being popular any day. Wow. Choose to be powerful over being popular. Now, we need to hear that because there's so many people that are chasing platforms and chasing crowds. Um, but I'd rather, you know, I'd rather be powerful as well, <laughs> for sure, man, for sure. <laughs> Listen, now, I want to ask you about, because I've been getting, a lot of people have been talking about, they've been, I want to pray for some families because a lot of families and I, that I know and even things I've seen on the news where they, they have children that are, have, are sick. We got this new virus, this, what is this, RF, uh, RFV, I think it is, uh, and I saw someone post uh, about praying for one of their uh, nephews who was young. It's like they weren't even uh, 10 or 12 years old that has cancer. And so I wanted to pray for um, some people, pray for some families, pray for these people, uh, kids healing. While we have you on the air, uh, if we could do that. And then however you want to flow, uh, so could you just do that, sir? Yeah, absolutely. So I know there, as, as Apostle just mentioned, there are many of you that are on here. You may be believing God for family members. Um, some of you may be dealing with ailments or sicknesses yourself. And uh, what I believe we've been wrestling with over the past uh, several years is really a spirit of infirmity, a mass spirit of infirmity uh, that has come in. And yes, I do believe that the Lord has used uh, many of the things that have come, uh, but it is not the will of the Lord for anyone to be sick. It is not the will of God for you to, uh, uh, to succumb to infirmity and sickness, especially when it comes to children. So Father, we stand in the gap for every child uh, that is dealing with uh, that disease, that's dealing with that virus. And even those families that are on here and you have children within your families that you believe in God for, we send the word of healing to you, to your home. We send it right now to the hospital. We send it right now to wherever you are. We send the word of healing. We rebuke sickness and infirmity in the name of Jesus. We command the plots and plans of the enemy to be shut down. I command spirits of infirmity to leave your bodies now in Jesus name. And we release supernatural healing to every individual and to every person that's on this live that is believing the Lord for healing. Father, I pray that you would heal them. I pray that you would heal uh, organs, restore organs, restore uh, body parts where there uh, have been uh, ailments that are there, where there's been severe pain. Father, I pray that the pain would go right now in Jesus' name. Father, to the one that's been having severe migraines, I pray that they're leaving them now in Jesus' name. To that person that's been having a sciatic nerve issue, I pray for healing right now in the name of Jesus. There's a person uh, watching me and you've been uh, dealing with uh, some kind of a blood issue. You've been getting blood tests uh, that have been run and doctors have been concerned about either what they're seeing uh, there that's been in your bloodstream, but the Lord says he's purifying your bloodstream right now in Jesus name. And for every person on here that is believing, I call forth your healing uh, as we're praying yes, for you yes. right now, be healed in Jesus name, be healed. There's somebody that's watching or will watch this and uh, you 
you're dealing with some kind of chronic sickness. I see chronic sickness where it's like the pain just keeps returning. But I hear the Lord saying, be healed. There's a hip condition that's being healed for someone now in yes. Jesus name, be healed. I command brain function to be restored in the name of Jesus, where uh, there have been issues within the brain and issues within the nervous system. I command restoration in the name of Jesus. And then there are many of you on here uh, that are pastors, your leaders. The Lord says that there is a fresh wind that's coming over pastors. There's a wind that's coming over leaders. There's going to be like you're going to get a second wind uh, back to you where the Lord yes. is about to refresh you. And he's going to actually remind you of the assignment that he gave Gave you some of you the Lord gave you assignments years ago and you you kind of drifted away from them some of you've been saying well Lord I'm not sure if I'm supposed to even do this now but many of you are about to get your passion for ministry for Come the on of the ministry back. And I can hear the Lord saying that he's blowing his ruach, his wind within your spirit to give you the strength that you need, to give you the refreshing that you need to empower you to accomplish ministry and vision. And so Father, I thank you for your release over every pastor, over every leader, over every prophet that's here. Father, I'm praying for wisdom for your prophets, that you would give guidance and direction. Uh, there's a young prophet that's that's watching this, uh, and uh, this is a young uh, uh, black guy that I see, and you're watching this, and the Lord says that he's going in to bring deliverance to your mind and soul, where the enemies tried to have, keep you bound in an area. The Lord says that truth is coming in, and it says if uh, the enemy Enemies tried to get in your ear to release lies into your ear to try to hijack your purpose and your destiny. But I hear the Lord saying that you're going into a season of deliverance. And the Lord says, I'm about to break your mind free from the bondage of the enemy that's been against you. And the Lord says, you're coming out stronger than what you were. And your destiny and your assignment will not be thwarted. And it will not be aborted, says the spirit of the Lord. And there are many more of you on here where the Lord says, I'm sending ministering angels to you. Whatever your area of need is, the Lord is yes. there to meet your need. So, Father, I just thank you again for everyone that's watching this and that will watch this replay. I pray for a release of your wind now over every individual. Let testimonies of healings come forth. Let testimonies of deliverance come forth in the name of Jesus. Let it be so. Amen. Yes. Apostle, I hear the Lord saying that there are people that are going to begin to call uh, for you uh, in, this is a, a specific African nation. Uh, the Lord says, this is one that you have not been in. And the Lord says, they're going to begin to call for you in this nation, but this will be a strategic assignment. It's not just going to be an ordinary assignment going in for missions or preaching, but it's going to be a strategic assignment where you're going to go in uh, to the government of that nation. And the Lord says, the door is going to be open for you to go in. And yeah. God says, there's a call that's going forth uh, where those that are supposed to be connected to your ministry, I hear the Lord saying they're going to start joining in. And the Lord says that many are going to start uh, to mm -hmm. partner with you monthly. And they're going to say, how can we go? How can, if we can't go, how can we send you uh, to this nation? How can we be a part of what it is that you're doing? And the Lord says that teams are about to come together once again. There are teams that are, uh, that are, that are going to come together. I see you on an online platform and it's like, like you're going to be putting teams together. Some of these people you will have never met physically or in person, but yes. on, on an online platform, I hear the Lord speaking to you saying, anoint this one, put bring this one in. And it's like you're going to be meeting some of these people at yes. certain uh, destinations as you're traveling and as you're ministering. And so I see great breakthroughs coming in Africa. The Lord says even in Uganda, uh, in some of these uh, African nations, there's going to be major breakthroughs that are there. And so that's the word of the Lord that I hear. I'll stop and just let you uh, go in because we'll be flowing all night. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you. I received I received that word. I received that word. Look, you know, like I said, we go way back and we used to do this for hours, <laughs> for hours, you know. But uh, there was somebody... I saw somebody's throat that was closing while you were praying for the sick. There's somebody, your throat has been closing up on you. And I wanted to pray for you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we speak to that person whose throat has been closing, that restriction that's in the throat. And right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we command it to open up, open, 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 open up. 
right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for that. Listen, before you get out of here, um, I want you, you told me about the testimony from the conference about the people who had the metal in their bodies. You got to share that testimony of what happened down in Florida before you get out of here. Yeah, when and, and a couple of them may be watching here, but we um, we did the Joseph Summit in Orlando. Um, and it was such a powerful move of God. We were really bringing people together, uh, dealing with the economic transfer that's coming and how people can position themselves and how the Lord is raising up Joseph's around the world. But it really turned into not just that uh, marketplace ministry, but it turned into revival. Healings broke out. We had so many people get healed uh, in that in those services that we had to stop the testimonies. We couldn't even count them, uh, the healings that took place. But there was a wave that came in of metal miracles. And this is where uh, God began to heal people that had physical, they had metal in their bodies where, where it might have been a surgery, where there were screws and plates in their knees, or uh, there was uh, uh, maybe a hip replacement done. And so, so many people came up and these are people that when they go through the airports, the uh, alarm goes off because they have metal in their bodies. And when I tell you the Lord not only healed uh, those people where they couldn't move certain wow. Uh, limbs, but he also dissolved the metal. And so where there was metal, it turned into bone or either cartilage. And so what we did, uh, even when I got back to my church, some of my members experienced that healing. And I told them, I said, the way we're going to know whether you got healed or not, yes. yeah, we see you moving and you're doing what you couldn't do before. And yes, you go and get whatever x-ray, but we're going to know it when you go back through the metal detectors in the airport. And so uh, when they when they were coming to the event, the metal detectors would go off. But when they were going back with that healing and they could move that part of their body, the metal detectors would not go off because the Lord had dissolved the metal in their bodies. And so it was creative miracles like that. And we've also been seeing an apostle. I know you've seen it uh, just a deaf ears opening uh, and where the Lord's been moving on people that couldn't see things like that. There was a lady uh, that could not hear from birth at a service I was just in. And the Lord told oh. me, he said, get oil and put it in her ears. And she began to, when I tell you, she screamed out that she could hear and her family was there and they knew she couldn't hear from birth. They've been with her in this process, but she began to talk. We witnessed her voice change. So wow. because she couldn't hear, she couldn't talk as well. But right in front of us, her voice began to change. And she said, I didn't know what water sounded like. Mm. I didn't know that a light switch had a sound when Come you on, turned sir. it on. But the Lord, and this is why I'm saying a creative miracle, because whatever she needed in her ears to hear was damaged. And yes. so God had to go in and reconstruct what was damaged in order for her to hear. And so God gets all the glory. I think it's just the beginning, Apostle, of, of many more creative miracles that we're going to see. So Yeah, I believe that. And I think I, I even shared this when I was with you. At, I think I had prophesied this at, at Mantle about something the Lord has showed me. And I've been telling people this. He had said to me, he made the comparison between an, an automobile. He said, even as the automobile manufacturer make spare parts for the automobiles that they make, you know, brakes and uh, what alternators or whatever, you need a new battery. He, yeah. he told me, he said, even as I am your manufacturer, I have the spare parts for, you know, for my creation. So, so I'm, I'm re I see it happening. I'm, I'm waiting for the increase of it. Listen, it, in the vaults of heaven, he said, it's just hearts and lungs and livers. You know, bladders, whatever you need, glory to God. And even when I said that there's somebody you've been dealing with a bladder infection, but in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray over you right now. In the name of the Lord, you rebuke that an infection in Jesus' name. My God, what a what uh, what a test what a, what a testimony, what a testimony. <laughs> Metal mounting. Well, look, I know you are a busy man. Uh, I don't want to. I would. I would love to keep you for another whole, another whole hour. But I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that to you. Listen, if you have been enjoying this, before we get off of here, come on, throw some fire emojis up here on on the on the on the screen in the comments before we let Apostle Giles get out of here. Before you go, just tell everybody how they can um, how they can reach you. If maybe somebody on here that does not know you. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can reach me by going to joshuagiles.com. And so all of my social media uh, handles are there. And of course, I'm on Facebook. There's so many scam pages out there. You know, I happened to somebody pulled it up and I saw all these fake pages with my name and they actually had quite a few followers. So if you want to know whether it's the real page or not, go to joshuagiles.com and click on the Facebook link there and also the YouTube link. And of course, I'm on on Mondays when as I have the release from God uh, sharing to, to thousands of people that are there. And so, Apostle, thank you for just bringing me on. Uh, you've been a blessing to my life and a friend of our family for for many years. And I tell people uh, when I mention you, uh, I was probably 14 or something around there. And you when I tell you, you were on and still are, but on the cutting edge uh, with technology, with ministry, with revelation, with the words of the Lord um, that really inspired me so much, um, you know, during that time watching you minister uh, was such an inspiration just to see you flow and to see how the Lord would use you. Um, you, I would see you pack out uh, that that church, Monroe in, in uh, Durham, that you, when I tell you people couldn't really get a seat. It was so packed in there and the miracles and the revelation and just the way that the Lord used you was such an inspiration to me. And I'm sure so many others that were there. And so I know sometimes, uh, you know, people are inspired by others and they never give them the honor uh, for uh, how the Lord used them. And so I'm saying this to, to you and to all that are watching that um, I honor you for your anointing, for your gift and for how the Lord's used you um, in my life and in so many others. So thank you again for having me on. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate that. And I'm telling you, this is what this is the one thing that I, that I, that I loved about you and I admired about you, even at the Mantle Conference where you remembered and you you honored all of those uh people that uh had mentored you out through the years you know um and so and and friends of your mother and all of that and how well you treated everybody i you know because sometimes people ask me you know i look i said joshua is still he's still the same dude you know and we see you on this platform and you're serious you know and you got that look you know <laughs> But, you know, there's other sides to him that y'all do not see. <laughs> but let me tell you what I laughed. You were on with, I saw you on uh, Instagram with uh, Prophet Bryce. And he right. said something, you know, you was all trying to get his word all serious. And he said something, man, and he just, he broke you up and you just started laughing. And uh, I tell you, he, he does more than prophesy, y'all. <laughs> He's not just that serious. What's I've been that? like this all my life, though. You know, when it comes to ministry, that when that anointing hits, that seriousness just comes on, and I'm in a vein. And then outside of that, I, I laugh, I have fun, I love laughing. You know, comedy is a thing. We probably would cut up after church. Uh, we we so many of us be at the church for an hour or two, just cutting up and, and enjoying and laughing. So that is definitely there, and occasionally. If you see me on some platform, you will see that come out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I said, you know, I said, well, you know, I didn't want nobody to be offended. So I don't I don't try to I don't joke with you in public because some of these folks <laughs> will get offended. You know, we used to call each other big head and all that old kind of stuff, you know. But uh, Apostle, thank you so much uh, for being on. But I want to share this word before you get off of here. I don't know. But it's, I see next year, 2023, about six months into the year, there's, I see some other, some new type of transition happening in your life. And it's almost like, I see you like pumping the brakes, like slowing down because there's some other things that God is starting to speak to you about around in the sixth month of the year. I see that like, again, I see it's like brakes are being pumped. You're slowing down. And I see God dealing with you about some other things. It's like he, he's beginning to download some new stuff into you. There's some things that yet God says, I want to show you and even some transitional stuff happening, even in your life around that time, there's some transitional things that are going to be happening in your life around that time. And so the, the Lord is, is, is saying that it's going to be, it's going to seem like it's going to be strange at the time. It's going to seem different, but he's saying to let you know that, Hey, you know, this is going to be me. I'm going to, I'm going to pump the brakes for a little while, <laughs> not for a long time. But for but for a little while, and I see some transitioning happening. Like I said, even in life around that time uh, of the year, twenty twenty three, sir. 
Lip, I'm gonna get you out of here, man. I know you probably your staff is probably standing around there like uh pointing at watches and clocks <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Again, thank you so much. Thank you for the honor. I love you. Love Listen, you. I love you to death, man. We've been knowing each other forever and our families. Thank you so much, Prophet Apostle Joshua Giles, for being with us. Everybody that's enjoyed this broadcast tonight, I saw y'all throwing some fire up there. All right, man, I'm going to let you go, and then I'm going to close out the broadcast. Thank you. Love you, man. All right, everybody. I tell you, what uh, what a night with Prophet and Apostle Giles. My God, good stuff. Thank y'all so much for being with us tonight. I also want to share with you again, I will be in Atlanta uh, matter of fact, I leave tomorrow for Atlanta. I'll be in Atlanta for the next couple of days. Let me throw the flyer back with Apostle Kimberly and uh, Apostle Lewis Jones at the the prayer conference. Let me throw the flyer up here before I say something wrong. Y'all hang with me. All right, there we go. So I'll be there in Atlanta tomorrow, and I'm speaking. Here it is. All right, there's the info right there. Those of you that are interested, you can go to rtagathering.com. I'll be in Atlanta at the La Meridian Atlanta Hotel there. And so look to see all my peeps that are from the ATL. We want to be hanging out. Let's see who else is in here. Let me give you some shout outs. Thank you all for being on tonight. Pastor Kenyon, I see you on here. Thank you for being on. Alicia, thank you for being on. Jeremiah, thank you for being on. Kimberly, thank you for being on. Let's see who else we got. Stephanie, thank you. Bridget, Anthony. What's going on? Mark Polo, the Grammy nominated maestro, Stella Award, multiple Stella Award winner. My partner, Mark Polo Dixon. Prophetess Nakia, thank you for being on. My niece, Nicole, thank you for being on. Everybody that's on tonight, thank y'all so much for hanging out. Next week, we'll be back in the cave. Next week, we will have Apostle Apostle Sonia Green, Apostle uh, Pam Ella Morgan will be with us next week. The following week, we'll have Prophet uh, Corey Bell will be with us. And a day in December, we're also going to have um, Prophet... John Veal is going to be on uh, one of these days in uh, December. If this has been a blessing to you and you would like to, so let me put this information on the screen as we close out. And you want to sow into this environment tonight. There's the information scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Thank you all again so much for being on tonight. Did it bless you? It blessed me. It's always good to talk to Apostle Giles. Uh, always so, so full of uh, revelation information and those testimonies. My God, from um, about the metal dissolving in the body, powerful. I tell you, we're just seeing the beginning of creative miracles being released in the earth and happening in these meetings and wherever we gather together. Uh, I'm so excited about it. Thank you, um, Tracy Morgan. Thank you for being on. Tonight, I saw that post. Thanks for that nice post you put up talking about me. Ah, appreciate that. All right, y'all. I'm getting ready to get out of here. This is Apostle Mark T. May broadcasting live from Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. You've been in the cave. If you didn't catch the beginning, you got to go back and catch the replay. It was so much revelation being dropped in this place tonight. God bless y'all. Peace.